Hi there. Welcome to my space of make-believe. So, a couple of friends have requested for short condensed versions of the stories that I've been reading and I thought, hey, I could do that. So, today in a gist with a twist of lime, we are going to do Mrs. Spring Fragrance by Sui Sin Fa, the first story from a book that just entered the public domain. Mrs. Spring Fragrance is a collection of short stories written in the late 19th and early 20th century, compiled and published in 1912. I have done the reading of the first story and you can go listen to it by hitting that right over there. Yes, that's the one. No? You want to hear the short version? Okay, I can do that. But if you change your mind, you know where to go. Okay, so let's begin. Oh, let me just tell you very quickly, there will be spoilers. So in case you do want to read it or even watch it, then, well, I've already told you there are spoilers. Okay, so if you're ready, let's begin. Mrs. Spring Fragrance is from China. She marries a Chinese businessman in America and migrates to be with him. He is a curio merchant, a man who collects and sells strange and weird stuff, and he is doing well. She learns the language, she lives the American life, she absolutely loves it, and the couple are very happy together until, dum dum dum, the day Mrs. Spring Fragrance tries to calm her neighbor and dear friend, 18-year-old Laura. Laura, who does have a Chinese name, but everyone calls her Laura, including her parents, live in a house that is furnished in an American style and wear clothes that's American style, but her parents hold on to traditions and values of their forefathers. And so they have betrothed Laura to the school teacher's son since she was 15. So the time is nearing for her to marry this boy, but Laura is in love with Kaizu, an American-born baseball player. In fact, he is one of the finest pitchers on the coast. He also sings along to Laura's piano playing. So you can see how the love happened, right? So Laura is over at the spring fragrances, whining and crying about having to marry a boy she never ever met and to give up on her singing hunk of a guy. Mrs. Spring Fragrance consoles her by quoting Tennyson, "'Tis better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all." She goes on to tell Laura not to worry, that she has a plan. Now this is about the time Mr. Spring Fragrance, after a long day of work, gets home, and by accident, hears the coat. He isn't sure what it means, and so swings on over to his American neighbor, and the answer he gets, he isn't happy. He believes it is better to have something you don't love than to love something you don't have. Mrs. Spring Fragrance then goes to San Francisco to visit her cousin. There she meets Ah Ui, who is in love with the school teacher's son, who Laura is supposed to marry. Perfect, right? So Mrs. Spring Fragrance plays a matchmaker, bada bing bada boom, within a week, Aoi is marrying the teacher's son. Of course, she is invited for this ceremony, which will be held in a church. She telegrams a good friend first, the good news, and then she telegrams her husband, Mr. Spring Fragrance, asking him permission to stay a week longer on the pretext that she has been requested to make her infamous American fudge for her cousin's fifth moon festival celebrations. She also tells him that she has had a great time because everyone is entertaining her with dinners and parties. And at one of these occasions, she spent an evening with a Mrs. Samuel Smith. Apparently, they had such a meaningful conversation that Mrs. Spring Fragrance now understands America better. She advises her husband not to be upset when his haircut costs him a dollar, but only 15 cents for the American. Not to be upset that his brother, who had come all the way from China to visit, is now in detention because this is how America keeps her citizens safe. 
Mr. Spring Fragrance isn't having any of this fudge business. I mean, leaving politics aside, especially since on the day he gets her telegram, he also gets one from his cousin from San Francisco about his missus running around with the teacher's son. He is now going crazy with all these questions like, does she really need to stay a week to make fudge, you know, in a place where her husband is not? But he tells her to stay if she wished, and he ends his telegram with a Tennyson's coat in the hopes that she would now read between the lines that she should be happy with the one she has, which is him, of course, than to chase around someone she does not. When Mrs. Spring Fragrance receives the telegram with the coat, she is delighted. She thinks that he has been reading her books of poetry while she's been away and cannot wait to get back to her husband, whom she absolutely adores, and she cannot wait to tell him all about how she worked her magic and got lovebirds together. Now, when she does return a week later, Mr. Spring Fragrance is all moody. He hasn't been sleeping or eating since her telegram. Conversations with his American neighbor on love has made it even worse. So he is sure that she is falling in love with this school teacher's son because in America, love is not forced and that means their arranged marriage is forced love. So he is dragging his feet unresponsive to her joy of being back with him and of course she notices this and she asks him like what's bothering you he cannot answer her something's like stuck in his throat i think he's about to you know instead he tells her he needs to sort out something important at work even as mrs spring fragrance is getting over mr killjoy laura barges in all excited because her parents have just made arrangements for her to marry kai Zhu. so they both are excited they're exchanging notes they are sharing stories of what had happened and all this while mr spring fragrance who is on the other side of the door eavesdrops on the conversation the first time he did it not a good idea this one kind of fixed the problem so this is when he realizes that assumption makes it out of all parties concerned and the world is all good again the end well i would still encourage you to either read the book which you can find on the Gutenberg project. It is online if you don't mind reading ebooks, or you can let me read it to you. I will drop the link down below. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed it and please do come back for more. Till next time, go grab a book to read or a pen to write and let your imagination take you anywhere. Be anyone, do anything.